What about that third hour of Raw, Mr. Bob Barker? Pretty much, pretty much. That's that's the sound I hear every week when I watch Monday Night Raw. That should be Monday Night Raw's new theme song. This should be Monday Night Raw's new theme song. Look. And then Monday Night Raw in the third hour, what happens? There you go. There you go. See you guys later. That's your Monday Night Raw review for February 5th, 2000. This show fucking sucks. This show fucking sucks. You know, I, I sat here and I contemplated even doing a review because th there's just so much illogical garbage that I, I, I could not even ponder. I, I could not even wrap my head around it. It was so ridiculous. And I want to see, I want to see these podcasters, I want to see these people out there Try and defend this garbage. Oh, well, JT, if you don't like it, don't watch it, man. You're the very stere stereotypical answer that I usually get every single fucking week. Right? The Patriots lost the Super Bowl on Sunday. Are you not going to watch them in 2018 come September? You fucking idiot. Now, Monday Night Raw ain't no fucking Super Bowl winning team, but I also don't want to be watching every single week, especially on weeks like this, and have my ins intelligence insulted. I don't even know where to begin. Let's talk about this one first. This is a doozy. Oscar versus Nia Jax was signed for the Elimination Chamber. Well, J.D., what's so wrong with that? They want to get all the women on the show. Yeah, that's fine and dandy. But the caveat here is if Nia Jax wins, which she won't, nor should she, even by countout, I've seen some people on Twitter, well, J.D., it'll be okay if she loses by countout. You need to go watch another promotion. Or you need to give up on the hobby of professional wrestling, if that's your opinion. Seriously. The caveat here is if Nia Jax wins, she gets a WrestleMania title opportunity, and she makes Asuka's match a triple threat match for whatever title she chooses. I, I want to know, I, I, WWE, I am speaking specifically to those in charge. You want to give me the first time ever Women's Royal Rumble, right? The winner of this Royal Rumble gets a title opportunity at WrestleMania, right? Are you following along with me? Asuka wins the Royal Rumble. Right? She gets to go and challenge whoever she wants. <laughs> Charlotte! At WrestleMania. So, you mean to tell me that the decision makers in this company thought it was a good idea to give Nia Jax an undeserved, oppor undeserved opportunity, right? And... With this opportunity being gifted to Nia Jax, you seemingly ruined the meaning of the Royal Rumble. You made the Women's Royal Rumble absolutely fucking worthless with one announcement. Now, but I'm, I'm the one who sits in his mother's basement and cries about WWE. Oh, Eva Marie! Right? How many fucking
fucking dimwits out there were like, oh my god, I think Nia Jax deserves it. You don't realize that the Royal Rumble now is absolutely fucking worthless. No matter if Nia wins or not, which she won't, nor should she, the Royal Rumble is now fucking worthless. What did Nia what did Nia do to deserve this opportunity anyway? Can someone tell me what she did? Did she give hand jobs in the back to WWE management? Did she buy them all cake? You know? Did Grimm apologize and he offered to buy all, all of the fucking women's division cake? What happened? I, I don't know what happened here. What did she do? Can someone please tell me why this opportunity wasn't gifted to, I don't know, maybe a Sasha Banks? What the fuck did Nia Jax do following the Royal Rumble to be, yeah, we're going to put her in a match with Asuka, and if she wins, she goes on to WrestleMania. I don't understand that logic. You know, Sasha Banks wants to fucking brag and boast that she was 55 minutes in the Royal Rumble. Why didn't you give this opportunity to Sasha Banks last week? Absolutely the dumbest fucking thing I heard all night. All night. So many logic holes in here. Now, what if Asuka, within this next three-week span, actually chooses Charlotte to challenge at WrestleMania? Does Nia Jax, if Nia Jax wins this match, does she go to SmackDown as well? Nobody thought of that one, though, right? So, Asuka and Nia move over to SmackDown to challenge Charlotte for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship? I, I don't even I don't even understand this. I, I don't understand this. The thing that gets me is how nobody is complaining that the Women's Royal Rumble, the winner of the Women's Royal Rumble, as if it wasn't bad enough that Ronda Rousey came out and pointed to the fucking logo in the most cringe-like fashion about 16 fucking times, because that's what we have to do now every fucking WrestleMania season. You can't go to WrestleMania. You can't book your flight unless you point to the fucking logo. This is why I didn't want a fucking Royal Rumble. Nobody listens to me, though, right? If this was the case, you shouldn't even done the fucking Royal Rumble. No, but I don't know how to fucking creatively come up with ideas for WWE. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. That's number one on the list. Let me see these fucking podcasters out there, these professional podcasters out there, fucking defend this garbage. Your Women's Royal Rumble, your first time ever, is now pissed on! Done. Speaking of the women, Alexa Bliss's promo. My fucking God. My God! Enough of this Me Too shit out there comparing herself to Brock Lesnar. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking serious with this shit? She's out there, well, how come I have to defend my title inside the Elimination Chamber, but you got guys like Brock Lesnar who are just sitting back and watching as someone wins the Men's Chamber to challenge him at WrestleMania? How come he's not defending his title inside the Elimination Chamber? If Alexa Bliss was fucking stupid enough to read that script and go out there and reiterate that fucking garbage... She is just to blame, just like everyone else. Instead of crying bullshit, why? Is it because I'm a woman? Uh, no. How about you use your fucking brain? Well, I don't know. Well, Shinsuke Nakamura won the Royal Rumble, right? Let's fucking piece this together. I gotta fucking draw it out for you because nobody knows what the fuck's going on. Let's draw it out. Shinsuke Nakamura won the SmackDown Live. Royal Rumble, right, for his brand. He's on SmackDown Live. He challenged AJ Styles at the Royal Rumble. As soon as it was over, he called out AJ Styles. Right? You following along? Okay. You got Brock Lesnar holding the other big title in the company. He doesn't have a challenger for the fucking WrestleMania event. 
So you're putting six guys in the elimination chamber to find out who's fighting him at WrestleMania. How else are we going to come up with a challenger for the Universal title? Why should Lesnar be in the match? Lesnar doesn't need to be in the match. He doesn't even have a fucking opponent. No, he's going to be in the match, and then what? Wins, and then he has no opponent at WrestleMania? You, on the other hand, haven't defended the title since October. Get in the fucking cage and wrestle! Not for this Me Too bullshit. The fucking balls on these people to compare Alexa Bliss and Brock Lesnar. SmackDown guy won the Royal Rumble. A Raw guy didn't. How are we going to figure out who fights for the title on Raw? Use your fucking brain. Speaking of the men's elimination chamber. Elias won a triple threat match against John Cena and Braun Strowman. What is his prize? A loss to Roman Reigns. Yet I'm supposed to sit here and act all, all shocked and surprised. Oh my God, Elias won. Number one hit on the charts. The fuck did he win? He won himself a fucking spear and a trip to the fucking doctor. John Cena versus Elias versus Braun Strowman in the main event of Monday Night Raw. The winner of this match would go on to the Elimination Chamber and enter last. He would be the sixth man drawn in the Elimination Chamber. Can someone in creative please tell me why this match wasn't booked for the go-home show of Monday Night Raw before the Elimination Chamber? Why are we getting this three weeks before the show? Hmm? Does it make any sense to do it now? When you don't even have the other three spots filled yet? What makes these guys so special that they're getting special treatment? Why is John Cena, Elias, and Braun Strowman getting special treatment fighting over who's entering the chamber last? What about the other three guys who didn't even qualify yet? What, they don't matter? They don't matter though, right? I don't understand that logic. Why wasn't this match done on the go-home show? You're doing this now. Again. Something that will be overlooked. Nobody will talk about it. Why? Because they were the first three to enter the chamber, so they get first dibs on the last entry? What about the other guys? If I'm anybody else that's qualifying after them, I'm going to have a fucking problem with that. Speaking of the chamber, WWE's doing a second chance fatal four-way for the last chamber spot. So everybody that lost is getting another opportunity. Bray Wyatt, Matt Hardy, Apollo Crews, and our best friend here, Finn Balor. So WWE gives us an unadvertised match with no build and John Cena versus Finn Balor. They have Finn Balor go out there and lose after lasting 58 minutes in the Royal Rumble. Momentum killed. Momentum killed. So, Balor loses to Cena after lasting in the Royal Rumble for 58 minutes. He loses his spot in the Elimination Chamber. People are wondering, what are they going to do with Finn Balor at the Elimination Chamber? Well, maybe a shot at the Intercontinental Championship and The Miz. Well, The Miz qualified for the Elimination Chamber tonight. He qualified for the chamber tonight, so what do they do? I don't know if this is WWE trying to correct the obvious mistake that was with Finn Balor losing to John Cena, but they are booking this match for Finn Balor to win and get in the chamber because there really is nobody else. Do you expect Bray Wyatt to be in the chamber? Do you expect Apollo Crews? To be in the chamber? I think he's working the late shift in Titus Catering. Matt Hardy? Nah, bro. You ain't waking up inside the chamber. I'll tell you that. 
Finn Balor is going to win. So he loses to Cena after lasting 58 minutes in the Royal Rumble to win a second chance Fatal 4-Way to ultimately enter the chamber anyway, and then what's the outcome going to be? If Balor's not the last fucking one to be eliminated in that match, what's the fucking point? Why is he even in there? Royal Rumble, 58 minutes. Chamber qualifying match loses to John Cena. Second chance wins. Enters the chamber anyway. Ultimately to lose. So not only did you kill Balor's momentum once, you're going to kill it again. But nobody cares. Wins and losses don't matter in WWE. They're only adding Balor in there because Balor's a bigger name than all three guys. If you don't like the words that come out of my mouth, you can ultimately lick my balls. Everything I said is a resounding fact. There is absolutely no way anybody watching me can refute anything that I said here. Nothing. Nothing. The reason why you come here is for the shit that I just mentioned in the beginning of this review. Because you're not going to hear about it on these pussy-ass podcasts that you listen to in this community. We discuss the real issues here. I don't know what you're watching, but when I'm watching, I want to be treated like a fucking fan, not like some fucking dumb idiot. This show was absolutely insufferable tonight. Can end it right there. Absolutely ridiculous. Monday Night Raw review, February 5th. 2018, I am, of course, you know who the fuck I am. I don't got to repeat it. Monday Night Raw review tonight. We're going to go over the rest of the show. Not like anything else happened outside of everything I just talked about. You guys missed off the script this weekend. Make sure you guys go and watch it. Parts 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, there was a part 3 this weekend. Talking about Paul Heyman possibly being the newest... The newest addition to Ronda Rousey's act. Make sure you guys go and check that out. Also a major, major, major rumor right now, which I hope is fucking the absolute fakest of news. Ronda Rousey, possibly the one chosen to end Oscar's undefeated streak. Please God, no. WWE has any care for this woman's streak. You will do right by it and put over a actual superstar and not Ronda Rousey who doesn't need it. Okay, make sure you guys go and check that out. Everything you need is in the annotation that you see within this video. Follow me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on that bell for notifications. Apparently, apparently YouTube has uh, flipped the switch on notifications. So you guys need to listen to the words that are going to come out of my mouth right now. You're going to go to the bell. Everybody, go to the bell. YouTube is going to, by default, have it on show highlights only, which means you're not going to get all my videos. You need to switch that to show all uploads. So you need to notify yourself of not only just the highlights, because you're not going to get everything. You're going to get everything a day or two, three late. You might not even get it at all with these fucking people. So make sure you guys have it turned on and make sure you guys are notifying yourself for all uploads and not only... The highlights, please do that and make sure you guys double check that so it is correct. I want to thank everybody for supporting Harry's, harrys.com slash script. I had a few of you tweet me during Raw. JD, you were right. This is the best shave of my life. I know. I know. I don't give you guys garbage. Harry's.com slash script. You're going to get a free trial shave set, shave gel, razor blade, razor handle, and a protective razor blade case all for free. All you guys have to do is... Spend 2 or $3 on the shipping and handling, and you're going to get the best shave of your life. Make sure you guys check that out. Harrys.com slash script. Make sure you guys also check out Audible. Audible is still sponsoring the podcast big time. So make sure you guys show some love to them. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. You guys are going to get 30 days free. That's one month of Audible for free. Plus, they're going to give you a free audio book. So if you guys have not signed up yet, make sure you do that. 
If you've already signed up and you have any family members that you feel might utilize this service that would love a free audiobook, tell your mother, tell your father, tell your sister, tell your cousins, tell your nephews, tell your girlfriend, tell their parents. Just keep it going down the line, man. Listen, JD's giving away free audiobooks. Sign up. And you're going to get something on the house just for listening to Off The Script, man. That's audibletrial.com slash off the script. And make sure you guys check out the Patreon page, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Monday Night Raw opened up with the most predictable of predictable matches. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it was bad by any means. It is what it is, man. Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt opened the show. You know, WWE is touting. I believe Michael Cole said that this will be Roman Reigns' first elimination chamber uh, ever. And Bray Wyatt, they were hyping up the fact, like they were trying to make you believe he actually stood a chance in this match. Well, Bray Wyatt is the master of the elimination chamber. He's going to go in there. He won the WWE title last year. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he didn't run into a fucking freight train known as Roman Reigns. That's headed for a collision course with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Give me a fucking break. Okay? No matter how much success Bray Wyatt... First of all, success and Bray Wyatt just do not compute. Okay? They shouldn't even be in the same fucking sentence. Then you're going to have him brag about how he's the master of the Elimination Chamber because he pinned AJ Styles and John Cena? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he delivered Sister Abigail to both of those guys, but when, de- when he delivers one to Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns is, uh, you know, fuck, uh, fuck AJ and, J- and John Cena. You know, I'm going to kick out of Sister Abigail. Yeah, sure. Sure. This really bodes well for us at WrestleMania. Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns. Wyatt goes for, like I said, Sister Abigail. It's blocked. Reigns rolls Wyatt up for a two count. Comes right back with a Superman punch for a two count. Reigns then goes for the spear. Wyatt boots him in the face. Wyatt with Sister Abigail, he nails it. Reigns kicks out, as always. Wyatt then mounts Reigns with elbows. He gets furious and frustrated. Wyatt picks up Reigns for another Sister Abigail. Reigns starts to power out and lift Wyatt up. I believe he hit a sit-out powerbomb. They run the ropes. Reigns hits the spear for the win. Reigns is going like we didn't fucking know. He's going to the elimination chamber. So Roman Reigns wins. Wow, like I didn't know who was going to win that one. What a great job there, WWE. You really kept the suspense, right? You really kept me on the edge of my seat with that one. After the match, after the match, Matt Hardy comes out, starts deleting everywhere. So he stands behind Bray Wyatt as Bray Wyatt is selling the spear. Because the spear is so devastating. Starts deleting Bray Wyatt. Twist of fate. Starts another delete chant. His music goes off. Clearly, that feud is far from over. Now, there's rumors going around that Matt Hardy now has the rights to the broken universe and the word and the term and trademark broken. Vanguard 1, Brother Nero, Senor Benjamin. All the broken universe is now in Matt Hardy's possession. Everybody's like, well, maybe this is going to start the broken Matt Hardy gimmick. They just came out with Woken t-shirts, which he was wearing tonight. Why would they make Woken merchandise if they were going to get rid of it? It doesn't make any sense. Matt is Woken. Matt will not be broken. WWE is not going to use something that is not theirs. So we're lucky we even got Matt Hardy in this current incarnation to begin with. Let's just be happy with what we got. But I do expect to see Vanguard 1. I do expect to see a final deletion. I do expect to see Rebby. I do expect to see Samuel Benjamin and the Lake of Reincarnation. Eventually, we'll see that shit probably at WrestleMania. I could see WWE. I could definitely see WWE doing something like they did with Piper and Goldust at WrestleMania many, many, many years ago on that street fight that Hollywood street fight that they had, I could see them doing something with Wyatt and Hardy at WrestleMania like that. Now, it it might not be something that is spread out across the show. First, there was a car chase with those two. Uh, First, there was a parking lot brawl. Then a car chase in which they took actual footage of the O.J. Simpson chase and just kind of cut that into the fucking uh, into the show, which was ridiculous. And and then they came back to the arena, you know? So, I I don't see them doing something like that, but I do see... 
a Final Deletion-esque match happening with those two to end this at WrestleMania. Seth Rollins is backstage with Jason Jordan, the legend himself, Jason Jordan. Rollins says that their final title shot with the bar is tonight, and he wants to make sure Jordan doesn't blow it. Jordan says he is 100%. He talked to his dad, and doctors have cleared him. Surprising to me, rumors going around that Jordan was not cleared. Jordan says that Rollins has no worries. Rollins says that this isn't about him or Jordan. It's about what they can do together and winning their tag team titles back. Finn Balor and Carl Anderson versus The Revival. Yeah, because it's all that much more different without Lou Gallows there. It's the same fucking match we seen last week. And on Raw 25. No difference if Finn Balor is there or not. Carl Anderson and Finn Balor with the win here. Balor tags in. Scott Dawson is uh, getting his ass kicked. He hits a sling blade. The hesitation drop kick. Balor goes to the top. Coup de gras on Scott Dawson. Balor with the win there with Carl Anderson. Nothing to it. And it does nothing for Finn Balor. Because he's getting a shot to go to the Elimination Chamber again. Ultimately to lose. You know? Because he's going on to the Elimination Chamber and he's going to run into the freight train known as the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire is going to treat him like Russell uh, Russell Crowe in Gladiator. He will be killed in front of everybody. You know? He's going to withstand lions and fucking, he's going to just take down the biggest guy in the yard. And then when he meets Roman, he's going to be laying in that fucking Coliseum dead as people carry him away. Just like his fucking WWE run. Oscar versus, that was a great fucking movie though, man. I love that fucking movie. Oscar versus Bailey. Oscar versus Bailey. Now, before this, We got Alexa Bliss out there. Pretty much uh, asking Kurt Angle why Brock Lesnar is not defending his title in the Elimination Chamber, but she has to. I gave you my reason for that. Incredibly, incredibly stupid. Says that Angle is being sexist. What about me? What about me? How come she doesn't get the same privilege? Whoever scripted this promo clearly, clearly missed the Royal Rumble. Either that or they intentionally wanted to make Alexa Bliss look fucking stupid. My God. You know, normally I reach for the remote control when Stephanie McMahon's music hits. Alexa Bliss made me want to reach for the remote control just based on the sheer stupidity that came out of her mouth. Use your brain, honey. Use your brain. Oscar versus Bailey. There was a... Promo backstage with Sasha Banks watching her match with Asuka last week, which was probably one of the best women's matches I've seen in the last 12 months. Probably the best women's match I've seen in the last 12 months on Monday Night Raw. Bailey comes walking in. She says, listen, you just, you, you've been watching this match over and over again. It's like the 20th time you watched this match. You're being too hard on yourself. Sasha Banks says the moment she stops being hard on herself, she stops being her. She talks about coming close to beating Asuka and says she needs to start reminding everyone that she is the boss. Now, mind you, Bailey comes in and when I look at Bailey, I want to vomit. I really do. Bailey comes in smiling from ear to ear. Honey, what are you smiling about? You are on the bottom of the fucking ladder. You're at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to women on Monday Night Raw, number one. Number two, you were on main event last week against Sonya Deville, okay? Number two. Number three, what are you smiling about? What are you smiling about? You should be smiling about nothing. The smiling on Bailey needs to go. I don't know what she's smiling about. She's looking at Sasha Banks and she's smiling at Sasha Banks. Honey, your best friend just eliminated you in the Royal Rumble. Granted, every woman for themselves. But if that's my best friend, I'm not going to walk into the fucking room. (laughs) What's going on, Sasha Banks? I ain't smiling at nobody. It's WrestleMania season. 
Pull your panties up and stop being a big girl. Then there was a moment. Then there was a moment of, this is what I want to see. There was a moment of, this is what I want to see. For a mere three seconds, for a mere three seconds, Sasha says she had to do what she had to do. She didn't win the Rumble, and she's going to be every woman for himself in the Elimination Chamber. She's going to go and win the Elimination Chamber and defeat Asuka at WrestleMania 34 if Kurt Angle puts her in the chamber, which she is, but the announcement wasn't made before this promo. So they go back and forth on who can beat Asuka. Bailey wants some tips. You know, Sasha doesn't want to give Bailey any tips. Bailey says, and this is where things got interesting for a mere three seconds. Bailey says that she does know that she could beat Sasha and Asuka. And she had this face in which there was no smiles and there was anger. She looked at Sasha. I can beat you and I know I can beat Asuka. And she walked away. If WWE rewinds that tape, if you're listening to me, if you rewind that tape and you see Bailey in those three seconds, that's the Bailey I want to see. That's the Bailey I want to see on Monday Night Raw. None of this fucking bullshit smiling and walking into the arena all hugs and smiles and kisses. No. No, it's WrestleMania season. It's time to put up or shut up. The three seconds at the end of that promo is the Bailey I want to see. If not, I don't give a single fuck about this woman. And I honestly think Alexa Bliss is losing the title inside the Elimination Chamber. In fact, she should. If Sasha or Bailey does not win this match at the Elimination Chamber, WWE will have fucked up. And I mean that wholeheartedly. Speaking of the match, it wasn't better than Sasha, but still, decent. They made you believe Bailey was going to do it, but she didn't do it. She gets tapped out. She went for the Bailey to belly. Asuka blocked it. Back and forth. Bailey then rolled up Asuka for a near fall. They made you believe that Bailey was going to do it. No. Asuka then right back to the arm bar for the win. She made Bailey tap out. As well, she should. Elimination Chamber qualifying match here. The Miz versus Apollo Crews. This is the only sound clip I will play from the show because A, the Miz is great on the microphone. B, I don't believe anything he says. I didn't believe one fucking word that came out of his mouth. You know, he talks a big game. He makes himself sound good. But none of anything that he said is going to come true. But it sounded good. It sounded good. Consolation or constellation? Constipation is what I have when I watch this fucking show. The stars have aligned to say what I've been saying since I've come back to Raw. That 2018 is the year of the Miz. Like 2016 wasn't the year of the Miz. 2017 was the year of the Miz though, right? Yeah, sure. Wow. By cheating. That Raw was the highest rated Raw in almost three years. And there's only... And you had absolutely nothing to do with it. And then the very next week, I defeated Roman Reigns again. Roman Reigns is a world-class athlete. He is one of the best... Ah, what? Well, the Miz is uh, speaking a lot of bullshit tonight. Tonight. 
chamber and earn the right to face, let me get this straight, the reigning, defending, undisputed, universal champion. Universal heavyweight champion. Yeah, because I, I, I'm dying to see that match. At WrestleMania, the cameras will be rolling for my new unscripted show on USA, Miss and Miss It. The world will be watching, and my daughter will be born just in time to witness the first ever Intercontinental and Universal Champion. Sure. Sounded good. If Miz was uh, auditioning for a uh, a role in a movie, or he was sitting down getting ready to speak to a manager about a new position for a new job, maybe I'd, maybe I'd give him the job, but... Anything he said there tonight, clearly, I just don't believe anything the man said. Sounded good. Sounded pretty. Don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Match was match was pretty decent though with Apollo Cruz. You know, Titus gave him the night off. You know, he wanted Apollo Cruz to have some in-ring action. He took him away from bakery duties because Apollo Cruz was so obsessed with getting all the talent a beautiful, delicious pumpkin pie. Now, people wanted coconut custard pie. But Titus insisted on pumpkin pie. Titus thinks that pumpkin pie and pumpkin in general is still in season. Titus loves pumpkin. Titus thinks that pumpkin should be served all year round. He wanted to bake everybody in Titus Catering pumpkin pie. Apparently he's got a new secret recipe from his great, great, great aunt. And he wanted to share it with everybody. Titus said, no, bro. We need to have you in the ring. I need you in the chamber. If you win the chamber, I'll move, I'll move you from bakery duties and I'll move, I'll move you to head chef. So that's exactly what he did. Gave Titus the night off. But he didn't get the win. He didn't get the win. The Miz ended up beating him. Skull crushing finale for the win. The Miz is in the elimination chamber. Just when you thought we're done with the Miz and Roman Reigns. There you go. They're going to meet again inside the Elimination Chamber. I think WWE booked this show blindfolded this week. Seth Rollins approaches Kurt Angle and Jason Jordan backstage. This was pretty interesting. Jordan was there rubbing his neck. Jordan says he can't compete tonight. He was warming up and everything was fine until he felt something in his neck. Jordan says he went to the trainers and they did not clear him to compete. Angle says that Jordan is telling the truth. So he had the backup of his father there. Rollins can't believe what is going on. And Angle says that the only thing you could do is forfeit the match. You're going to have to forfeit the match. In comes Roman Reigns, who already wrestled tonight in a 20-minute match against Bray Wyatt. Rollins looks over. I got myself a partner. There you go. Roman Reigns. And Seth Rollins challenging for the tag team championships. Rollins running through fucking partners like he's running through underwear. So I ask you, what if Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins won this match tonight? Which they didn't. Which they didn't. But what if? Because it got everybody wondering. You know, Reigns just qualified for the Elimination Chamber. What if he won this match and won the tag team titles? Is he going to be a tag team champion inside the Elimination Chamber and then we're going to be without a tag team championship match at the Elimination Chamber? Because that was my first thing. That was my first thought here. But it did not end up being that way. So I'll give the WWE a pass here. So we have the team of Reigns and Rollins versus The Bar. This was probably the best match on the show. Uh, Jason Jordan comes out. And he's got to throw his two cents. So Rollins hits a sling blade on Cesaro for a two count. Rollins goes for the curb stomp, which I guess they're calling... Well, Michael Cole called it the stomp. Corey Graves calls it the blackout, but Cesaro moved. He's seen it coming. Cesaro uppercutted Rollins, uh, and then Rollins counters a big suplex, uh, suplex of his own into a Falcon's arrow. I love that move. 
Cesaro then gets a thumb to the eye while Sheamus says the referee distracted on the apron. Jordan grabs Cesaro's leg. So Jordan was on the outside. He grabs Cesaro's leg because he felt like he could help the distractions and the cheap tactics of the bar. He grabs Cesaro's leg, allowing Rollins to hit another move and a close two count. Rollins drops uh, Cesaro, but Sheamus runs in and, bra- and breaks up the pin. Reigns approaches Jordan on the outside, telling him, listen, we got this, man. Go back. Get out of here. Go back. We got this. So Reigns is yelling at Jordan. They start arguing. Rollins fights off both Cesaro and Sheamus now. Reigns tags in. So at this point, I think everything's okay. Reigns is getting ready to do the spear. And Cesaro pulls Sheamus to safety. So they grab the titles. They start walking away. They don't want nothing to do with Reigns and Rollins anymore. Jordan then, acting as Reigns and Rollins' bodyguard, he stops them in the aisleway. Like, where are you guys going? You know? So Cesaro's trying to get by. Sheamus is trying to get by. He's just blocking both of these guys' path to the back. So all of a sudden, Jason Jordan throws a right hand and nails Cesaro. He didn't think about what he was doing. He didn't know his place on the outside. He got Rollins and Reigns disqualified unintentionally like a dumbass, and they lost their final opportunity at the Tag Team Championships. Now, I don't know where this is going, because Jordan's status right now is a big looming question mark. But I like the fact that Jordan fucked over Rollins here and he didn't even realize what had happened. This was great stuff. Match was very good and I liked the ending. I thought the ending was very clever. Making Jordan seem like he didn't know what he was doing. But I think in the back of his mind, I think he knows what he's doing. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, Back stage, Rollins comes backstage. He starts arguing with Jordan. Kurt Angle gets in between them. Rollins says that he's only sorry for not legitimately hurting Jordan when he had the chance. Rollins then calls Jordan a selfish son of a bitch. Angle orders Jordan to go home and stay home until you are cleared. Jordan tries to argue with his father. Rollins already just storms off in anger. I know that they're trying to build towards Rollins and Jordan at WrestleMania, but we don't know. Anything about Jason Jordan and his status right now with the neck injury. So it's going to be interesting to see. But I, I like that ending, man. It was simple. It was effective. And it got the job done. Nia Jax versus Vanessa Floyd. No, you want me to say Vanessa Floyd won? Of course not. Nia Jax won. Easy win. Big leg drop. After the match, Nia actually cut a very good promo. This was the best thing about this match. The promo at the end. Nia Jax was interviewed by Renee Young. She comments on the chamber match against Asuka, which we'll see Jax fight for a spot at WrestleMania, which you guys already know I am just sick of because it just makes the Royal Rumble and Asuka's Royal Rumble win pretty much irrelevant. That's her opportunity. Unless Asuka is willing to give this up. Unless Asuka said, yeah, I'm going to give Nia a chance to win my Royal Rumble spot. Even that I don't like. Doesn't make any sense. Jack says that she's the only woman in WWE that doesn't fear Asuka and the only one that Asuka can't beat. Jack says she's going to mess Asuka's pretty little face up so bad that when she wears the mask, she's going to have to wear her mask permanently. Jack says Asuka won't be the Empress of tomorrow. She will be the Empress of yesterday. Ooh. Nice little fucking jab there by Nia Jax. Grim got her upset, bro. What are you doing? Maybe you should upset her some more. Sonya Deville versus Mickey James. This was garbage. Nobody cared. I'm sure you didn't care. Mickey gets the victory here. Uh, I don't even know. I think it was a roll-up. I was on my phone. I, I just don't give a fuck. All, all these women outside, Sasha Banks and Asuka, are just god-awful. So, Mickey James wins with a roll-up out of nowhere. After the match, uh, Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose and her walk coming out from the back is fucking god-awful. Oh, but she, she, she's attractive, man. It's terrible. It is terrible. It's something that I don't want to see in the women's division. Now, she, it looks like she's walking out to the fucking set of a porno movie. Awful. She don't even look like a wrestler. After the match, Absolution beats down Mickey James. Alexa Bliss comes down for the save. Again, no, no, no explanation. Everybody's just confused. Right? 
Uh, is Alexa Bliss now going to befriend everybody in the chamber because she has to defend the title? Helping Mickey James to the back. Mickey James looks confused. The fuck do I care? Elias is out with the guitar. He starts talking about the Elimination Chamber and WrestleMania 34. He then starts his latest hit. Elias sings and takes shots at Braun Strowman and John Cena and Universal Champion Brock Lesnar. Cena comes out to interrupt them. Same old shit. Same old shit. Uh, triple threat match here. Seen Elias win because he was the smarter man. Cena called for the five-knuckle shuffle. Elias uh, was uh, about to hit. Uh, get hit with the five-knuckle shuffle. Braun runs in, scoops up Cena for a big power slam. Elias blocked a power slam and kicks Braun out of the ring. And Elias steals the pin on John Cena. So, Strowman power slam John Cena. Elias kicks Strowman out of the ring. And Elias steals the pin. He wins and earns the number six chamber spot. Uh, Elias with a guitar shot across Braun's back. It looked and sounded good. Braun was fucked up. Those guitar shots, no fucking joke, man. I, I don't know why they continued doing it. Braun had a clear gash on his arm. I think it was his left arm. Braun had a big-ass bruise down the center of his chest. He had scrapes on his back. I don't know why they continued doing these guitar shots, you know? For fucking pro, poor Braun Strowman, man. He got... He, he need Brock Lesnar in the face at the Royal Rumble. He got knocked fucking senseless by a right hand by Brock Lesnar. And then he gets destroyed by a guitar shot from Elias. In the end, Elias wins with a uh, cheap tactic. As Braun hit the finisher on Cena and Elias steals the victory after the match. Braun Strowman goes on a rampage and power slams Cena and Elias and Cena and Elias. The crowd chants one more time. Same old shit. Now, one of my listeners, Jesse... He pointed out something very interesting to me, and I want to make sure you guys are aware of this because I did not think of this until he brought it to my attention. And I want to ask Mr. Labar, because he's the biggest Braun Mark I think I've ever seen. Every match that Braun Strowman is in, it is a no-DQ match, or a no-rules match, or a triple-threat match, a fatal four-way, an ambulance match, last man standing match. Has Braun ever wrestled in a regular match without there being... You know, some type of stipulation where there's no rules. You know, I love Braun Strowman just like everybody else. I think Braun's great. I think Braun's one of the best things on Monday Night Raw. But it makes you wonder, is WWE hiding something with Braun Strowman? Do they not have faith in Braun Strowman to actually wrestle a one-on-one -on -one match with rules? You know? I, I don't know. Is, is he still that green? Does WWE still think he's that green? It's just interesting, man. I'm not going to be uh, the one to make too much of it, but it's, it's certainly interesting. It's something I didn't think of when it was brought to my attention. So I want to make sure you guys are aware of that. Let me know what you guys think about that. Also, I, I failed to mention this earlier. The Miz beat Apollo Crews, which we went over, but he won clean. No outside interference. That's exactly what I want to see from an Intercontinental Champion. He won clean. There you go. That's your Monday Night Raw review. Dismal show. Insufferable show. Shit didn't make sense. This show was... Clearly booked by fucking idiots blindfolded who don't know what happened only two weeks ago at the Royal Rumble. Seriously, what, what the fuck's going on? Not even two weeks ago. A week ago. Everything that I mentioned at the beginning of the show, whether you like it or not, whether you think I'm too angry, I'm too loud, go fuck yourself. I don't give a shit. Everything I said was fucking irrefutable fact. You can't fucking combat me on anything that I said there. And if you do... Good luck. You're going to end up failing. That's your Monday Night Raw review. Get the fuck out of here. It's too late. I'm JD. Thank you guys so much. Hit that thumbs up down below. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you guys turn on all uploads and not highlights only, please. Harrys.com slash script. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. And Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. I'll see you guys tomorrow for SmackDown Live. And that's it. It's your Monday Night Raw review. I'll talk to you guys later.